Hey everybody, it's the coach. This is Thursday Night Football on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a terrific matchup on tap between the Atlanta Falcons and the Miami Dolphins. With that, let's get down to Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Standing by for the call, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, Coach. From beautiful South Florida, there's a look at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. The excitement brewing here in South Florida as a moment ago. The Dolphins starters were introduced to this home crowd. They're fired up as well as they get set to match up with the Atlanta Falcons. And hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that could have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. Here's Bosher to kick it away. Jakeem Grant now to return. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. So here come the Dolphins now as they get set to take over on offense. They will be led out by their seventh-year quarterback from Texas A&M, Ryan Tannehill. Unfortunately for Ryan Tannehill, as the improvement was starting to develop in the NFL, two knee injuries in the last two seasons. The second one cost him all of 2017. Right now, if you watch the Dolphins, you believe as Ryan Tannehill goes, so do the Dolphins. On first down, Tannehill. Got a man open, that's Devontae Parker complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A gain of 32 that time. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Tannehill on first down. Flush to his right. And he slides to avoid the hit. A Miami first down on the 14-yard pickup. I think the last two plays really illustrate how difficult it is to game plan against this guy because you know he can throw the football, but how about his use of legs as well? What we call those broken plays, you can't account for them. Yeah, those plays, those two that you just mentioned, a microcosm really of how he can hurt you. carry for Frank Gore back home here in Miami and he's got four down inside the 20 to the 18 and oh Frank Gore yet to get up maybe dinged up on that play we'll get an update when we come back to Hard Rock Stadium
Here's the first carry for Kenyon Drake. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. The starting defense for the Falcons. There's a lot to like about Robert Alford's play. Tenacious, tough, gritty, able to run. The one thing he's trying to clean up, gets a little handsy at times with the receivers. Sometimes he'll work out with boxing gloves in practice to remind himself to keep his hands off of those guys so he can just go ahead and make plays. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Here's Tannehill. And it's caught by Parker. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Big completion there on third and short. Keeps their opening drive alive. Not only alive, but plenty of possibilities now. First and goal, and you know me. I'm a big advocate. If you're going to throw the ball, throw it early in the down and distance count. push his way forward here for a good little game. They give him five that time as they draw a bit closer here for a second and goal. When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead because now the defense can't dictate with pressure. They're guessing about where you're going to go. I might come right back at them with the same play, the same set, and see if they can stop them. Now Tannehill, and his throw's going to be incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss him? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. Now Tannehill on third and goal. He's got Touchdown, Miami. Danny Amendola, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Dolphins are going to take a first-quarter lead. An out route there for the score, a quick out route there for the score. Yeah, you're not really serving the defense on this one. You're just counting on timing, making this play happen. One, two, balls out of his hands, knows where he's going, just puts it to the outside. Touchdown. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And that makes the score 7-0. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it winds up in six points for the Dolphins. Sanders now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. They'll be led out by a man in his 11th year now at the helm of the Falcons, the 2016 NFL MVP, Matt Ryan. What a season Matt Ryan had in 2016 where he led the NFL in so many different categories as a quarterback. Numbers dropped in 2017, but the team still qualified for the playoffs, took down the higher-seeded Rams in L.A. before losing a tough one in Philadelphia to the eventual Super Bowl champions. Matt Ryan, he makes them go in Atlanta. Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. And it's hauled in by Austin Hooper. And they get him down, but not before.
before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a gain in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opened things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. Delay of game, offense. And yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still first down. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. They go play action here on first down. Looking downfield for Jones, and he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Rashad Jones, and he'll bring it all the way back just a yard or two shy of midfield. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down a score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. It put their defense in a really tough spot. getting set to go here. Now they'll be looking to duplicate the efforts of drive number one that resulted in seven points in the seven-zip lead. Well, you know how much I enjoy horse racing, right? Looks like they caught a flyer out of the gate, as they would say when you run in the big-time races. It means they get out to a fast start. They're setting the pace, making the other team chase now. Good starting field position for the Dolphins as they have it first and ten. Drake will start the drive on the ground. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Second down, it's Drake. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but yeah, from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Robert Alford. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. Parker, the intended target. Oh, man, Brandon, not a real good throw that time. It looked like he tried to put a little too much air under this one, and it turned into a floater. And defensively, this is a dream. He could have fair caught that one. That was way too easy. the Falcon offense now as they get set to take over here and following the interception just any interception are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no you just throw that out the window 
I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Ryan will bring the Falcons up now first and 10 at their own 23. They'll run for the first time with Devontae Freeman. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. When I see Cameron Wake make plays like that, I can't help but shake my head sometimes. He had to go to Canada first before he came back to the NFL, where he's now an all-pro. Yeah, undrafted out of Penn State, but look at him now. And just think about all the pass rushing moves he has, his ability to play against the run, Remember, he was a combo outside linebacker, defensive end. Now, he's just simply one of the best in the NFL. Now Ryan on second down. Man open, that's Calvin Ridley. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff. Didn't yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. Lion now off the bootleg. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. It goes as a gain of six, and it's a first down. And when you have a guy in the backfield who can catch the football, you don't just use him strictly for check downs or dump offs. You make him part of the primary passing attack because what you're trying to do is get him into open field and then let him make people miss and advance the football. First and ten, it's Ryan. And that will be incomplete. They couldn't hook up on what's going to be the final play of this first quarter. One quarter in the books here on a Thursday night. 7 nothing is our score. And we'll be back to South Florida after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Falcons in possession to begin quarter number two. They've got it second and ten to start things out. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Second down, Freeman. And he'll take this up over the 40 to about the 41. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? On third down, Ryan. And he's got a man, Calvin Ridley. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. So they get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. Go. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. This is Freeman on first and ten. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I'd say the staff is up in the booth watching the game. They may want to file that one away. See how fast the free safety closed to make that play? Might want to check it to a throw the next time. Ready. 
Again, they'll run with Freeman. And some space here. Finding room inside the 40. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. That's how you get right up off of the map, because on the last play, they stoned him in the backfield and dropped him for a loss. But he's the type of guy that scared me a little bit because he's not daunted. Just got right back up, showed some confidence, and picked up a first down with his very next run. Let's go. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 39-yard line. Hey, hey, hey. Now a play fake here on first down. And his throw is incomplete. Austin Hooper, the tight end, was the intended target. And it's second down. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Second and ten. It's Ryan again. Looking deep for Julio. And this is going to be intercepted. Cordray Tankersley with a pick. And he will bring it out past the 20-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. offense now heads back on the field a tale of two extremes already in this game a touchdown pass on their opening drive followed by an interception last time out now it sounds like things balance out right what's that that mythological thing that we do if you have a candy bar have a diet soda with it it balances it out and we know that's not really true right because the interception that sting lingers a little bit longer got to come out now and put together some nice plays Tannehill and the Dolphins break the huddle. Come up first and 10 at their own 21. They'll start the drive with Drake. And he'll get about six up to the 27-yard line. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Right, right, right. 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 Tannehill now running the option to the right side. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. And on this play, the read for the quarterback was the defensive end, and he was totally focused on the quarterback. He should have given it off inside to the running back. Instead, he kept it and ended up taking a loss on the play. Under four to play now. Clock running, third down. Out of the gun, Tannehill. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. On fourth down, Matt Hawk to punt it away. Justin Hardy deep for Atlanta. One yards on the punt there. And the Falcons will be taking over first and ten. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. And it's been a miserable start for them offensively. Obviously, two drives, two interceptions. And this is where you have to know your quarterback and know how you actually have to reach him. Do you do it with a little bit of humor? Maybe you break the ice a little bit like, hey, didn't we practice in that color jersey all week? <laughs> Not the one that you're throwing it to? Or maybe you have to be stern with him. But whatever it's going to take to get the message, 
It has to be done. He's putting the game in jeopardy. Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 at their own 27. Movement there on the offensive line, a little quick, and a five-yard penalty. False start, offense. Oh, jumping early from his tight end spot. Maybe trying to get a jump start on that route. Yeah, I think you're exactly right about that. And oftentimes when you see that, that means the play call was supposed to come in his direction, and he was eager to go catch a pass. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. Now Ryan. That's caught over the middle. Hooper. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. going to give it to Freeman. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Exactly what they needed right there, because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off, because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. to Freeman. It's Ryan toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. I know that's their first connection in this game, but you and I both know that Julio Jones is without a doubt his quarterback's favorite target. Oh, yeah, Matt Ryan loves this guy. Who would yeah, and the reason that he's that is because of his dependability. And, and quarterbacks have to have that from their receivers, meaning they know where they're going to be when they're running certain routes. They don't break them on them. They don't change them up and do their own freelance stuff and put their quarterbacks in bad situations. Matt Ryan has ultimate trust in Julio Jones. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We'll come back to Miami after this. A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report. But business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coaches' two-minute drill. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. And he will find Ridley on the left side. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 18 yards the gain for number 18. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw ten interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident keep flinging it. I'll just figure there's something wrong with the football. the offense with a first and ten and he's four for four now throwing the ball to start the drive 
They'll throw on first down with Ryan. Caught on the right side by Jones. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Okay, so now the question, how did he get that wide open? Well, we both know that he shouldn't because from the time they handed out scouting reports before this game, he was circled, starred, everything. Find him, cover him. But sometimes you can scheme a guy open. You put the receivers in a bunch. Maybe you move some motion. Maybe you put them on the backside of a formation, and all of a sudden you've got a better matchup. Every now and then, the offensive guys, they figure a way to get him open, even with everyone keeping eyes on him. And that's certainly a guy they want to keep trying to scheme open. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Encroachment, defense. So they don't even need to run a second down play. Give them the first. And typically when you down. see this jumping, is it usually third down, fourth down? They got them on second down. I think that's a lack of discipline. So now then, the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. Again, Ryan drops it off for Coleman. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Throwing again, Ryan. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive, and finally, I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They slapped the double coverage on him, made it very tough for him to get the ball. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. On third and goal, Ryan. And this is caught for a Falcon touchdown. Calvin Ridley, a five-yard touchdown. And the Falcons are an extra point away from tying the football game. And a little time left on the clock, so on the other side, they're thinking, gosh, we'd like to get that lead right back. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Here I am <laughs> going ahead and tapping out the first half. Well, There's still time. Way. They've got to make a decision about what they want to do on the kickoff, where they want to let their return guy touch it. Now Matt Bryant on for the point after. Bryant tacks on the extra point, and that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. That time, a nine-play drive, and the end result, an Atlanta touchdown. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. 
Here comes Grant on the return. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. down it's Tannehill and he'll toss this one incomplete seeing no options he throws it away the one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half they've come after him they've sat back I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing and they certainly have kept them on their toes that's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard so now second and ten after the incompletion on first down Drake off the give from Tannehill. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. And before they can run this third down play, we're going to get a timeout as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. The Dolphins on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and five. Hey, 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 hey. Set, 28. Here's Tannehill. Over the middle, he's got Gesicki, the big 6'5 tight end. And the Falcons going to use another timeout as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Here's Matt Hawk now on for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. before he could get out of the backfield. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7 seven, seven our score. As we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. 
Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We want to remind you that new this year in regular season games, I'll take you around the NFL, give you stats and scores from games in progress, as well as look back at games that have already been completed. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, let's get you back out to Brandon and Charles. Set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece, 7-7 seven, seven our score. On the return, here's Justin Hardy. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. Ryan will bring the Falcons up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now Ryan on first down. This one complete to Mohamed Sanu. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Give him nine there on the first down completion. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Play action. It's Ryan. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. So, Charles, tie game here. What are your keys as we continue to play this second half? I know people think it's always trite when you say the same things over and over, but they're tried and true in the game of football. Who's going to block better? Who's going to tackle better? In this case, to me, it's turnovers. You've got to take care of the football in order to win the game. On third and one, Ryan. Looking downfield for Joe. And that's caught inside the 35. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. That one goes for 36 yards. Usually hitting a deep post pattern, as we just saw there for a big gainer, that's tough to do because you usually have a safety or two in the middle of the field. But if you hit enough crossers and underneath routes and curls, you start to get those guys creeping up, wanting to make plays on the football. It's the equivalent of a change-up in baseball. You show your other stuff, throw the change-up, and on that play, it worked for big yardage. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 30-yard line. Coleman. And he'll take this inside the 30 to about the 29, maybe the 28-yard line. Xavier Howard up to make the tackle. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Back to the ground, this time with Freeman. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially, no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. The Falcons on third down, a perfect four for four thus far. This is third and eight. They snap it at one. Now Ryan. And incomplete here on third down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? 
creates a lot of confusion. Have a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. So a field goal try here on fourth down as the Falcons call on Matt Bryant. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. And Bryant's kick is good. And they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. So that's a seven play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. And things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to their goal line, things stiffened a little bit and forced the field goal. Here's Bosher to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most half? Of, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. On first down, Drake. And some room to maneuver. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. A Miami first down on a 14-yard pickup. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Now on first down, Drake again. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Tannehill hands to Drake. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. But well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. The Dolphins on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and eight. Four down, four down. Cut, cut. From the gun, here's Tannehill. And Amendola with a catch. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Give him 30 yards there. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. That little arc on it, he's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 as they're down to the 29-yard line. They go play action here on first down. And that is incomplete here. Good coverage that time by the linebacker, Deion Jones. Just work with me a second here because in my lifetime, seeing how quarterback percentages have changed in throwing the football, I mean, back in the good old days, if you were around 50%, you were doing okay. But now, 
you need to be 65 to 70 percent to be considered an elite quarterback and in this ball game I feel like we're playing old school right around 50 percent yeah he's under 50 percent he needs to start hitting more targets so after the incompletion on first now second and ten back to the air Tannehill on second down looking for stills here and it's intercepted Picked off by Robert Alford. Stills the intended target. Well, NFL quarterbacks have learned the hard way. You're not going to get Rich thrown against this guy. He's definitely too good. And this is now a second interception of the ball game. And if I'm running the offense, I've got to tell my guys, you've got to go work on the other corner. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yep. Run what Put you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. After the interception, here's Ryan. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And brought down, but not before they're able to get it up to the 25. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Ryan now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Pitch to Freeman. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Miami. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. second down and finding the tight end Hooper and he'll be taken down at the 46 yard line four yards on the completion and it sets up a third down and partner I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right got the completion but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league so even though he caught it couldn't turn it into much more the Falcons on third down they've been near perfect four for five to this point they need just a yard here it's third and one out of the gun it's Ryan and incomplete the contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. There's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight.
the Dolphins now. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Tannehill and the Dolphins break the huddle. Come up first and 10 from back at their own 10-yard line. Good. That's 20. Good. Try to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he hits his target. It's Kenny Stills. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. 18 big yards on that one. And a Miami first. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Got the guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to look deep down the field. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. There's definitely contact there, but it's the fourth quarter of a kind of tight game, and sometimes the officials just say, let them play. Kind of like your mom used to with you and your brothers, just take the broom to you and send you out to the backyard and tell you to settle it yourselves. <laughs> I like that, yeah. There was contact. I don't know, like you said, enough to warrant the flag. It was close, though. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Watch 80, watch 80. Go. 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 On second and ten, Tannehill. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Drake. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. It's a gain of seven, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 at the 20. The drive will start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. On second down, Ryan throwing the out route incomplete. That's Jones. And he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there. Ryan to Jones, the Falcon connection there for a first. I really don't think that Julio Jones could be happier right now. Plenty of catch opportunities in this game. He's converted them, and his team's winning. And Matt Ryan's happy, too, to have Julio Jones on the other side of these. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of 
of times we talk about breaking teams down, and oftentimes it's through a running game. These two, they can break a team down through the air. Ryan now a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and ten. On first and ten, it's Ryan. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And 15 yards there on the catch and run. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomped down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. First down, Ryan. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 12 more yards there and another first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in and picks up the first down. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 41. This is Coleman, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Mika Fitzpatrick made the play defensively, the first round pick out of Alabama. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football, keep the clock grinding, keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. It's Freeman, and he'll take this one down to about the 40. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. The Falcons on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and nine. Freeman again. And he'll get inside the 40 to maybe the 38-yard line. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 1.51 left. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So an important try here from Matt Bryant. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And this won't get there. Won't be online either. It's 
it's no good. Off to the right, and this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Here's Ryan Tannehill and the Dolphin offense back out onto the field. This is something we've seen many times over the course of his career. Can he pull off another fourth quarter comeback? And it's very strange, isn't it? Because when it's a player of this magnitude, even though the guys on defense have the lead and are sitting in the best spot, they're maybe the most nervous people in the stadium because they've seen this happen to too many people before, too many teams. They've got to find a way to shut him down. Here we go again for the grizzled vet. Back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Vic Beasley in there to take him down. And the clock will roll. He's back to throw. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Devontae Parker was the intended receiver. And it's third down. Back-to-back -back big plays defensively. First the sack. Now they force the incompletion on third and long. Things looking pretty good for him. And this is where they have to be careful because they've got the momentum going their way. They will be really amped up to get to the quarterback. Look out. Draw, screen, something that can be used against them. Back to throw. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Call it a three-yard gain, and that'll bring up fourth down. He got out of bounds. That's a good thing, but still short of the first. And now, since this brings up fourth down, the defensive play caller, grab your nerves, because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes, but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily. So the challenge comes in inside of two minutes, and it gets overturned. And it changes the whole format of what's about to happen because both sides had thought a certain call had been made. Now they have to flip back and start over. He'll look to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield, and it's knocked away and incomplete. Good coverage that time by the linebacker, Deion Jones. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. the Falcons they have the three-point lead defense did their job now late game although it looks good you know the coaches they haven't counted this as a victory yet I agree with you totally big applause for the defense but no one is taking their headset off on the sidelines they don't believe this game is over the offense has to close this one out by taking care of the football and they'll try to close it out now The Falcons in victory formation as they take a knee. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play.
The Falcons in victory formation as they take a knee. about you partner but watching them take the knee there and finish this one off I feel like I'm going to be sore tomorrow this was one bruising affair low scoring but my kind of football not a work of art but maybe in your world a little bit of a work of art you I, like the defensive side I thought it was pretty I can't help myself I thought it was pretty and it ends in a kneel down as the clock rolls down to zeros well, Charles, the old saying, the old cliche, if you will, points at a premium. That certainly applied here, didn't it? And that almost felt like opened up a time capsule, didn't it? Old school football, low scoring, close game. What a way to finish it up. You loved it, didn't you? You I loved did. the defense. I certainly did. Brought back the images of the game of old. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From South Florida, good night, everybody.